And God saw Noah's uprightness and integrity, while all men were corrupted and polluted by lasciviousness. And he determined to remove the human race from this broad earth, and made this known to the blessed Noah, and commanded him to make an ark for the saving of himself, his sons, and the rest of the animals. Noah constructed this ark during the space of 100 years, and he made it in three stories, all with boards and projecting ledges. Each board was a cubit long and a span broad. The length of the ark was 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Noah made it of box wood, though some say of teak wood, and he pitched it within and without. At the end of the 600th year, God commanded Noah, with his wife, his sons and his daughters in light souls to go into the ark, and to take in with him seven couples of every clean animal and fowl, and one couple of every unclean animal, a male and a female. And he took bread and water and with him according to his need, not an abundant supply, lest they might be annoyed by the smell of the feces, but they got food just sufficient to preserve their lives. God forewarned the blessed Noah of what he was about to do seven days beforehand, in case the people might remember their sins and offer the sacrifice of repentance. But those rebels mocked at him scoffingly and thrust out their unclean lips at the sound of the saw and the adze. After seven days God commanded Noah to shut the door of the ark and to plaster it over with bitumen. And the fountains of the deeps were broken up from beneath, and a torrent of rain fell from above for forty days and forty nights, without cessation, until the waters rose fifteen cubits above the highest mountains in the world. And the waters bore up the ark, which traveled over them from east to west and from north to south, and so inscribed the figure of the cross upon the world, and it passed over the ocean, and came to this broad earth. So the rain was stayed, and the winds blew, and the waters remained upon the earth without diminishing one hundred and fifty days, besides those forty days, which, from the time that Noah entered the ark, and the flood began until the waters began to diminish. Make in all one hundred and ninety days, which are six months, and ten days even until the twentieth day of the latter Teshri. The waters began to diminish from the latter Teshri to the tenth month, on the first day of which the tops of the mountains appeared, but until the time when the earth was dry, and the dove found rest for the sole of her foot, was one hundred days. The ark rested upon the top of Mount Cardo. In the tenth month, which is Shabbat, Noah opened the door of the ark, and sent a raven to bring him news of the earth. And it went and found dead bodies, and it alighted upon them, and returned not. For this reason people have made a proverb about Noah's raven. Again he sent forth a dove, but it found not a place whereon to alight, and returned to the ark. After seven days he sent forth another dove, and it returned to him in the evening carrying an olive leaf in its bill, and Noah knew that the waters had subsided. Noah remained in the ark a full year, and he came forth from it, and offered up an offering of clean animals, and God accepted his offering and promised him that he would never again bring a flood upon the face of the earth, nor again destroy beasts and men by a flood, and he gave him, as, a token the bow in the clouds, and from that day the bow has appeared in the clouds, and he commanded him to slay and eat the flesh of beasts and birds after he had poured out their blood. The number of people who came forth from the ark was eight souls, and they built the town of Feminon after the name of the eight souls, and it is today the seat of a bishopric in the province of Suba. Noah planted a vineyard and drank of its wine, and one day when he slumbered and was sunk in the deep sleep of drunkenness, his nakedness was uncovered within his tent. When Ham his son saw him, he laughed at him and despised him and told his brethren Shem and Japhet.
But Shem and Japhet took a cloak upon their shoulders, and walked backwards with their faces turned away, and threw the cloak over their father, and covered him, and then they looked upon him. When Noah woke and knew what had been done to him by the two sets of his sons, he cursed Canaan the son of Ham, and said, Thou shalt be a servant to thy brethren. But he blessed Shem and Japhet. The reason why he cursed Canaan, who was not as yet born nor had sinned, was because Ham had been saved with him in the ark from the waters of the flood, and had with his father received the divine blessing, and also because the arts of Sinai mean music and dancing, and all other hateful things were about to be revived by his posterity, for the art of music proceeded from the seed of Canaan. After the flood a son was born to Noah, and he called his name Jonathan, and he provided him with gifts, and sent him to the fire of the sun, to the east. Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years, the sum of his years was nine hundred and fifty years, and he saw eighteen generations and families before and after it. He died on the fourth day of the week, on the second of Nisan, at the second hour of the day, his son Shem embalmed him, and his sons buried him, and mourned over him forty days. Chapter 21 of Melchizedek Neither the father nor mother of this Melchizedek were written down in the genealogies, not that he had no natural parents, but that they were not written down. The greater number of the doctors say that he was of the seed of Canaan, whom Noah cursed. In the book of Chronography, however, the author affirms and says that he was of the seed of Shem the son of Noah. Shem begot Arphaxer, Arphaxer begot Kainan, and Kainan begot Shala and Mala. Shala was written down in the genealogies, but Mala was not, because his affairs were not sufficiently important to be written down in the genealogies. When Noah died, he commanded Shem concerning the bones of Adam, for they were with them in the ark.